this walk away movement thing, I'll tell you, I'm starting to understand where black people are coming from when they say that the system's against them. And look, my walk away is from the Republican Party. And I'm going to tell you what, see, I'm watching this walk away movement. I'm hearing what people are saying and I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been saying that 20 years. Like where, like I've had black friends in Chicago. I try to look at them and try to say this and it's like, <laughs> they can't hear. And so I was like, yeah, yeah. T I was pushing 10 years ago. I wrote, why don't black people vote Republican? Democrats want to take the guns. Black people in the hood, not all, not all the same, you know, but black people in the hood, they want to carry guns in the gangs. So, that, and they've got the same reasons that Republican voters do for wanting to carry guns. Why are they vote? Why why are the gang members in the inner city voting Democrat? Well, yeah, you know, like what you know. Okay, so anyhow, but I'll let hashtag walk a movement, walk a movement, walk a movement, hashtag walk. I'll let hashtag walk away speak for itself on this issue about the Democrat Party, the Democratic Party not delivering results. Okay, all right. Well, this seems to be the biggest, best kept secret. See, I see you get on and walk away. I'm not saying we should go for Republicans either. Hello, walk away people. Listen to me. Listen to me. Conservatives who vote for Republicans have always hated the Republican Party since before Reagan. They've been around you. Same country, same passport, same citizenship, same state ID. Those Republican voters have been all around you. Now, I, I walk away. I mean, this is great. But I'm waiting for walk away to figure out that conservatives have been walking away from Republicans in every single election. It's why conservatives voted for Ross Perot, which is why Clinton was elected in the first place. The Republican base, the voters that keep the Republican Party going have been walking away from the Republican Party for failed results for decades. Nobody has wanted to walk away from the Republican Party as much as Republican voters. When they voted for Trump, they voted for Trump because he wasn't a typical Republican. What, am, what, I, what and it, it's, so, okay. So as, as you're having your walk away epiphany, as you're finally realizing this late in life that the results haven't been showing up, I'm, I'm happy that, I mean, I have not wanted to see my black friends in Chicago that I was next to for four years going to the Moody bubble, little bubble Moody school. I've wanted their lives to be better. And I'm like, can't you see that the Democrat Party is leeching off you? Like they keep you down and they get up and they pretend it's like this massive marketing thing. It's like you're their slaves as voters. I'm like, you don't, I mean, it's like, like I see my black buddies in Chicago and they're, they're listening to this hate, this hate filled right. And they're like really getting into it. I'm like, you're loving that song. Like a Pentecostal at church, man. It's like, and it's like chopping up bodies and hating people. And it makes you angry like a bullfighter makes the bull angry and just keeps jabbing him, you know, like, do you see what's going on? You know, and, and it's like, I'm trying to sell them Amway or something. It's like, that's the response that I get. It, it's, it's like they're predisposed to the fact that I couldn't pop. Well, anyhow, the hashtag walk away thing is it's finally catching on. So what's obvious to some of us is now becoming obvious to the rest of us. But one thing I've just in the, in the few walk away videos that I'm seeing, and I'm looking at this now, what I, what I'm seeing is I don't see the walk away movement talking about how the conservative base, the Republican voters have despised the Republican party. So Republican party, what, what's going on? How did, I mean, Lincoln started the Republican party and used it to end slavery. He fought a civil war to do it. White people from the North died, killing the white people that owned the slaves in the South, freeing the slaves. How did the Democrats who were an old KKK bunch for years, how did the Democrat KKK party manage to convince black people that it was their friend and the Republicans were their enemy? How did that happen? I'm going to tell you how that happened. See, I've been in Taiwan 10 years. So I have something to say about this. <laughs> That's the slogan of the Taiwan special, if you didn't know that.
Oh, here, you know, it's on the back of my shirt. There it is right there because I have something to say about this. I lived in Taiwan 10 years and that gave me somewhat of a perspective. See, I get what black people, I get my black roommate kept saying about how the system was against black folks. And I, and I love this walk away thing. And I love hear people saying, you know, look, we can't have white people being the masters. If we blame white people for everything, then they're the masters. If nothing's your fault, then you can't change anything. So if everything's white people's fault, then you got no power. You better have something that's your fault or you can't. I'm here. I've been saying that for maybe 20 years of my life. And I'm hearing walk away, whatever, you know, there's walk. I don't want to just say walk away just for black people. There's walk away people all over, all walks of life. I mean, it's walk, you know, but I'm, I'm fine. I'm hearing this and this is great, but now I'm, un, I'm identifying more and more and more with my black roommate who just couldn't get past the past. At least that's how I saw it. He was very concerned, very concerned that racial reconciliation, that blacks and whites were going to become friends and people were going to start to deny that slavery ever happened. And I'm starting to get concerned about that. So I want to move forward into the future. I've, I've been advocating that, but for the first time I'm coming out, I'm walking away from my push for the walk away. Let us not forget we don't have to keep fighting the battle yesterday. We don't have to keep fighting it, but let us not forget. Living in Taiwan, oh boy. Oh boy, I've got bombshells. American companies, I called them on the phone and told them, people franchised to use your name in Taiwan told me I have the recordings. They hate Americans. They hate foreigners. I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I'm, I'm leaving it a little bit aloof. My purpose is not to defame people at this point. Not yet. I've been over here. I see. Okay. In Taiwan, you can get this permanent residence thing, right? And once you've got it, you can pretty much do whatever the flop you want. You got to, you got to work for five years. You can't have a single day between jobs. You can't get a speeding ticket. In all ways I qualify, except you're supposed to have your work permits. But my boss, franchised by an American company, looked at me and said, you are not allowed to have your work permit. I called immigration in Taiwan on the phone. I said, my boss will not give me my work permit. They said, they have to. And immigration hung up the phone on me. Well, they have to. Click. Okay. Should, have to, need to, must. That doesn't enforce the law, dude. This is what I'm saying. See, in the earlier part of the Taiwan special, I had these, these long 30, maybe 40 minute videos trying to establish what was going on in the third world legal system. I look at cars. I, I talk about this 14666 thing. It's, it's the law. Like 666 is written into the law. It's really weird. It's like, how did that get there? And, 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 I, and I, when I talk about the, 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 the work requirements in the English teaching and how it's a black market, it's like I'm speaking... It's like I'm speaking white static, like, you know, it, and it's like, like, what, what? I'm like, I just showed you, I painted you, you, you regurgitated it all back to me. I asked you, you said, yes. I said, what's the number? You said 14 and you still don't get the problem. Well, what are you talking about? Look, they require you to breathe. They say you have to, ha here's a law. You're required to prove that you're breathing. It's illegal for you to earn more than $200. You are required to pay $400 so you can breathe. Don't you see that they've outlawed breathing? Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what? And it's, it's like, I have to explain it like five, 200, eight billion. I don't know how many. Let's talk Carl Sagan billions and billions of times. And people still don't get what I'm talking about. Taiwan has this third world legal system. Americans, listen to me. Most of the laws in the world are not able to be obeyed and live normal life. America is this ultra pampered, ultra comfortable place where the laws actually don't have to be broken on a daily basis for you to live. It's really weird, but in America, it's normal that you don't have to break laws constantly to survive. But when you're dealing with the apartheid, 
South Africa and it's illegal that you exist? Yeah. That's most of the world in this way or that way. Now, Taiwan is the only country between the U.S. and China. China wants to own, it was explained to me by Mitch Young. Look him up. He was on TV in the late 90s explaining why Taiwan had an election and China was mad about it. I talked with him when I went into the legislature while it was occupied by students. I met him at the back. It was really nice that we crossed paths. He said, Jesse, China wants to own Taiwan so they can counter Hawaii. Why would China want to counter Hawaii? In case you don't know how the maps work, it's so they can invade America. Just how, just how the, the, the radical terrorism wants to annihilate Israel so that they can then go to America next. China wants to own Taiwan and use that as a launching pad to invade the United States. I don't know if you figured this out. I've been over here 10 years. I know how the world works. We've got to get this Taiwan country working and we can't have it running around getting franchised uh, company names in order to try to speak English and teach English better. And then saying that they hate foreigners. Telling foreigners, you can come in, please, please come in, be welcome, come in, be welcome. You're welcome here. Come in, please. We love foreigners. We love foreigners. You're welcome. Come in here. And then say, you can do anything you want. After five years, not a single day between jobs. You cannot have one day between jobs. You've got to be employed solid. You can take a vacation as long as you're still employed. It's a vacation. It's not unemployment. And you can't get one speeding ticket and you have to have all your work permits. Oh, but by the way, we are never, never, never going to verify that your boss ever gives you the work permits. We're going to mail the work permit to your boss and let him keep it from you and create all kinds of ways for him to keep it from you. And we'll say it's private negotiation. That's what Taiwan's doing to the Americans that they pretend to welcome. And this is the country that's keeping America safe. And I don't know what it's going to take for people to wake up and decide that this country that wants free trade with America needs to get their act together. I've been living in this. Black people look at me. I know what it means to have the system against you. I know. If you're Taiwanese, they pay you half as much as they pay you if you're a white American. All kinds of problems. There's all kinds of problems. They just, they don't, they don't know. Some guy comes in from Europe, German, speaking a terrible thick German accent, and they hire him as an English teacher because that's in their little perspective. Lots of this, lots of this judgmental, prejudging racist stuff going on in Taiwan. It's terrible. It's terrible. You, you get an American born Chinese speaks perfect English, can't speak Chinese. They won't hire that person because he couldn't possibly speak English because he has a Chinese face. This kind of stuff is going on in Taiwan. They want free trade with America. They're what's keeping America safe from China doing a launch pad invasion. And Congress is not asking them to stop acting like a third world country when it comes to their laws. Are you, is this a joke? What the heck? Nobody knows about this because America doesn't know about other countries. So I came over to Taiwan to learn about other countries. And what happened? I learned about black people. I'm out of time for today. I'll be back tomorrow.